Welcome to the So Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Sober Lounge. My name is Stephanie Rubio. I am the CEO and marketing director here at Sober Marketing Group, bringing you another episode and welcoming you this morning. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. Thank you so much for spending 15 minutes of the your morning every single week with me. You know that I love these content sprints because they allow you to get a lot of actionable content right in 15 minutes. So not a lot of rambly conversations around here except for our monthly guest. And let me tell you, this month's guest is going to be phenomenal. You're going to love her. We're going to dive deep into brand messaging and content and regional content. Okay. So I I cannot wait to share this, this woman with you. She's going to be one of your favorites moving forward. I know it. So today we're having a conversation, um, in our tidy with SV series, right? So if you're a Marie Kondo fan, we are spring cleaning the entire month of March, gearing up for the months of April, in May, and June, and all the exciting things that we have geared and planned for you here at Silver of HQ for quarter two. So today we're having a conversation about your bios on social media, about your links on social media, as well as your avatars. So these are the basics, okay? And that is why I wanted to take an entire week, every single week, to talk about the basics and how we can get back to the simplistic aspect of social media so that then you can start bringing joy back into how it is that you navigate on social. So if you did not catch last week's episode, go back and go ahead and listen to it now, or you can listen to it right after because it's a very general um, episode to the concept of the things that spark joy from a Marie Kondo perspective, right? But we're tying it up to marketing and social media and how we navigate on social. So go listen to that episode or listen to it right after this one. So bios on social media. Bios on social media have become that new, I want to say it's like the new review site, if you will, when, you know, I had someone tell me the other day, you know, I was looking for a photographer for a newborn photo shoot that she was doing with her family. Um, And this was a friend and she said, you know, I saw some great photographers, but you know what? It's so weird that they did not have an Instagram account. They didn't even have a Facebook page. And I thought to myself, well, and then I asked her, you know, this is a marketer, you know, asking these questions. I said, well, uh, what about their portfolio? She's a wonderful portfolio. They had great photos and samples. And I, oh my gosh, there was this one picture. I fell in love with it, blah, blah. But they were not active on social. So that was the first thing that was like, hmm. I was like, so who else did you find? She said, oh, and I found this other person. But their bio was very confusing. You know, they talked as if they were in another state and they were really, they weren't clear. They did newborn shoots. And even when I then visited their website, it wasn't, um, you know, it was, it didn't correlate basically with their branding. So I thought, aha. So here's what I want to tell you about bios on social media. Bios on social media are basically like that new about page. Okay. They are fast. Um, some of them, I, I believe Instagram is 150 characters. If I'm not mistaken, you know, Facebook gives you a little bit more leeway in that about section and they have other opportunities within their, um, within the page, for example, on Facebook pages or even LinkedIn to get a little bit more wordy, if you will. But it's platforms like Twitter, Instagram, even Pinterest, that if you are not capturing your prospects within seconds in that bio, you've pretty much lost them. Okay. Because here's what I even find. I tend to follow a lot of people 
based on their bios. And then I start looking and rummaging through the feeds. It's so crazy how that happens, but it's the truth. When you are really serious about working for someone and with someone, you're going to make sure that the verbiage is there way before the pictures because pretty a pretty feed we know means nothing if the bones are not there okay so when you're working on a platform like instagram and you're working on a platform like facebook pinterest twitter what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're make you want to make sure that you're answering what it is that you do who you do it for and how you do it very, very simple, right? In 150, in 150 characters, it's not as easy as you would think. So I am going to actually read to you our bio on Instagram, which we do change all the time. And we're going to get into that just now. So our bio reads marketing. Okay. Women in business. Okay. So our category is advertising and marketing. And the actual bio description reads, blending customer-centric marketing with feminine-inspired brand messaging. Hostess, hashtag the Silver Lounge, which is a podcast. And then I have a clear call to action, which is free marketing bundle, which they can receive by clicking the link in the bio. And then I have also placed in there our um, our branded hashtag, which is our official hashtag for all of all things sober, which is hashtag the sober way, which is um, our signature um, marketing methodologies, right? So let's take in a platform like Instagram, because I know that's what so many of you just love. Taking a platform like Instagram, why did we decide to change out? Silver Marketing Group in the in the name, uh, you know, in our account name, and instead replace it with Marketing Women in Business. That is because when you are on social, you want to make sure that that name, that name that is in the uh, main portion of your bio, has keywords. So for us, obviously, the biggest keyword is marketing. So we placed that in the front. And then we also made sure that we we needed to have the, the words women and that we need to have the word business because we cater primarily to women in business. And while we do service, um, uh, you know, some businesses that are um for males and that are um, male owned and operated, the vast majority of our client list are women, right? Obviously, our username stays as close to server as possible. Now, Suburb Marketing Group is available on Instagram, but um, which we, we do own that username. However, um, we decided to offer just underscore silver because the name silver was unavailable at the time when we created this account back in 2016. Um, obviously, we have then the actual bio. So in the bio, again, you want to answer the question, what is it that you do? We do here, customer-centric marketing. For who? We do it for women in business. So that feminine inspired piece is important. So even if you are someone who um, you're a real realtor and you cater primarily to um, a female base or you have a business that caters to women, um, that is our area of expertise because that is our primary audience. And then um how we do it. We do this through um, branding that is feminine inspired, um, that is female thinking. So basically our, our marketing strategies are always going to tend to put um, the female first. Uh, it, it's our forte, it's our expertise, it's where we thrive. And having that in the bio clearly allows people to that visit the profile to understand okay this is who she caters to this is who the team caters to or the agency caters to and 
if I'm not, if I don't fit the bill, if I don't fit the description, if my product doesn't fit that description, it may not work. So really, it acts as an opportunity for people to right away decide whether we are a good fit for them as much as they are a good fit for us, because it does have to go both ways. And the most important thing here is that call to action. Okay, because you know, if you if you heard the episode that we did with Miss Kate Whitaker a couple weeks ago, social media is not there for you to just sell. Social media is there for you to provide information, for you to provide great, awesome content, and for you to build that relationship with your prospect. Okay, for you to build that relationship with the the, the community. What they do when they are ready to purchase from you is what is the action that they take once they click on that link. That's why having the call to action for me for the free marketing bundle is extremely important because that's when they're okay. They're going to start making those decisions. They're going to start making those buying decisions is in that marketing bundle. You want to make sure that you place your call to actions right away. Now a platform like Instagram a platform like Instagram now has the um, something that I'm not 100% in love with, which is whenever you click on a bio, they have um, they now have a link that says more, and you actually have to click on the bio for it to drop down. So, is this an opportunity for you to put the call to action first, and then later the you know your actual uh, description? It's up to you. I've seen some people do it. I personally, um, and I've encouraged people that feel that that you know this is an opportunity for you to test this. I personally tested it. I did not. I did not like it. I don't want people to come to the profile and right away feel like they're being sold to. I want them to feel welcomed. I want them to, you know, get to know us as an agency and as a team. And then I want them to make those buying decisions. I don't want them to right away feel like they have to be buying from me or signing up for anything that is not the tone that I want to set when, um, when we gain a new follower on a platform like Instagram. So those are the things that you need to consider, you know, for the link in the bio, for the link in the bio, for example, for Instagram, I always tell people, you know, having something like Linktree or any of these link in bio type of situations, um, if you're not really tech savvy, or if you're someone who doesn't have a website, they work great. However, if you do have a, a .com that you're already paying for, okay, that you are already paying for, you know, you're paying hosting, etc. Whether it's through WordPress and you know, whether it's through you know, SiteGround, Bluehost, uh, HostGator, what have you, your or Wix or or Squarespace, it does not matter. You're paying for this monthly, annually, etc. Try to host a link tree inspired page instead. Now I have a wonderful tutorial on how to do this over on YouTube. I'm gonna click the I'm gonna put the link in the show notes so that you can have a look at that. But it's really easy to create. Um, I create mine with a plugin called Thrive Themes, but you can use any um, any plugin. You don't even need a plugin. You could just do it through your um, through like a page on Squarespace or like a page on WordPress or Wix and you have a link tree inspired page that where you can host several links. Now our link, when you do click on it, our link is going to take you to very key and specific areas within our online hub, if you will. So we have a link to the podcast. We have a link to the blog, how to sign up for the newsletter, a link on how to um, apply for the Silver of Gifts program, which is our nonprofit marketing program, um, a link to some of our favorite marketing tools. And then we get into two links that are very key and important to us, which is um, an opportunity for you to learn more about our services. And then an opportunity for you to basically ask yourself the question, 
are you ready to work with a marketing agency? So these links, I switch them out often, really on a monthly and or quarterly basis as I see fit, depending on what opt-ins we have available for the community and what freebies and free downloads and bundles, et cetera, that we have available or events, workshops, masterminds. All of these things, I typically like to switch that um, uh, when need be, really. And I like to place that most important link at the very top. Okay, so again, the link in the bio is so important, so important. Make sure that it's up to date. If you do not have a Linktree inspired page or if you're not using Linktree or link in bio, any of these, then the link that you do have in the bio has to be the most current to the latest post that you have available. Okay, because switching out that link constantly is the reason why platforms like Linktree became so popular because switching that out was a hot mess. I remember back in 2016 um, and 2015, it was just a hot mess in order to constantly be changing that. Um, and for social media managers, imagine making sure that those were up to date with all the clients. It was, it was a lot to handle. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to cover today was the avatar. So again, this is a hot topic. Some people will say one thing, others will say others. I have come around, if you will, at some of these concepts. Um, some people like to have a logo, a professional logo, the, the business logo, the branded logo, if you will. We have our branded logos on all of our platforms. Will we ever change that to a photo of myself? I don't know. Um, it depends. It depends on a lot of factors. Um, depends on your brand, depends on who's managing the community. If you are someone who has others managing community for you, you may not want to place a photo of just yourself. You may want to place a photo of your, um, of your company logo. If you are someone who is at the forefront of your brand, um, you may want to consider putting a professional headshot. It, that right there is something that needs to be tested, and I believe that you should. You should test it, figure out what works for you, works for your brand. I've been able to build the Suburb brand using my logos always. And like I said, will that change? Who knows? I may change to a photo of myself in the future. Um, and if I do, I'll let you know if it had this huge astronomical impact. If anything, I think it'll allow people the opportunity to to um, feel like the brand is a little bit more personal, which I wouldn't mind them feeling. Um, but aside from that, it really goes down to the work for me. Um, so as long as you're producing great work and clients are happy and you are producing great content, whether you have your professional headshot or your company logo is really beside the point, right? But from the attraction marketing standpoint, um, test it out. If you have a logo, switch it out to, a, um, if, if you have a business, for example, a mortgage um, brokerage firm, you have many team members, try to get a team member shot and, and use that as your avatar or you can switch it out monthly to your employee of the month or uh, quarterly to different teams within your organization. So if you are a brand and you, you know, you have a face, the face of the brand, if you will, or the face of a campaign and you want to switch it out like that, you can. It's really, really um, up to you. I would test it heavily before deciding that one thing works over the other because you would be surprised. Okay, so thank you so much again for uh, being with me for these a couple of minutes um, today. If you have any questions about any of this, I encourage you to send us an email at hello at suburb.com. You know that we also offer these wonderful, fantastic strategy sessions and intensives that I'm going to leave the links in the show notes for. You can always sign up for one of those if you feel like all of this is just too much and you need a little extra help cleaning up all of those social media platforms and getting them scrubbed and ready to go for the next quarter for quarter two. Um, you can absolutely sign up for one of those. Hint, hint, hint. Please subscribe to the newsletter. If you are not subscribed to the newsletter, you're missing out on extra bonus content 
freebies, you're missing out on sales, hint, 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 and discounts. So go ahead and make sure that you're subscribed to the newsletter so you can get the latest information there as well. And as always, again, you can email me at hello at suburb.com or follow me on Facebook or Instagram by simply searching suburb, that's S-O-B-E-R-B-E. And I will chat with you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.